We're pleased now to be joined by Raul Kopelman from the University of Michigan. Raul, tell us about this new five-dimensional imaging mode. Uh, Three-dimensional imaging is obvious to people. Four-dimensional, there is a time dimension, so that's pretty obvious. So what's the fifth dimension? The fifth dimension is the chemical content. And what we like to know is the chemical content or analyte at every position, at every instant of time, ideally. And that, if, I, if we get that kind, we can really tell what's going on biologically, say in vivo, say even in a tumor or heart or wherever. The uh, new thing about it is that while methods for three-dimensional and even imaging four-dimensional have been around for a long time, I mean, X-ray, uh, CT, MRI, you name it, ultrasound, as a function of dimension and time, what they never saw was the chemistry. And to see the chemistry, we had the old-fashioned blood test, or somebody poking in and cutting something out and analyzing it later like a biopsy. And that gives us very limited information, both about the position and the time where this chemical really belongs, where it was. So we want to see the entire picture. And that is not possible by most ordinary methods. So what we are able to do now with photoacoustic imaging, helped out by so-called contrast agent or molecular nano agent, which get targeted to the right locations or cells, we can really get this complete picture. So how will this impact then cancer therapies? Okay. Now, for instance, it has been known for a century that uh, tumors are low in, can may be low in oxygen, which is called hypoxia, and it may be a more acidic than the environment, lower pH, which is called acidosis, and that this affects the therapy. If you have low oxygen, you don't want to do radiation therapy. If you have acidosis, it's going to affect the chemotherapy, and many drugs are not going to work. Now, what's really new in the field is that about a year and a half, it has been discovered that the big new hope of immunotherapy gets suppressed by potassium ions in a tumor microenvironment. So we are very interested in that as well to establish that. The whole idea is that instead of the usual kind of treatment where they, you try on a patient one thing and it doesn't work, and six months later you try another method and it doesn't work, and depending on the tumor, the patient may not live more than 12 months. The idea is to do personalized medicine by doing first the diagnostics of the tumor, the chemical diagnostic and the chemical image of the tumor, which will ahead of time tell the treatment, the doctor, what is the optimized treatment to give or most importantly, what not to give, what to leave out. So it could literally be a life and death decision yeah, that yeah, it would yeah. help with. What have been some of the results that you've seen from your research? Well, this is terribly, terribly early. So uh, we, at this point, we have, the most we have done is show, being able to show in a mouse in a tumor that we can show the whole map. Yeah, we had a, a, we published last year in Nature Communication, and there is a time-dependent image inside the tumor of the mouse, and you can see the 
pH or you can see the oxygen and you can also compare it to another location where there is no tumor. So we are obviously in a terribly early stage of this. What kind of impact do you hope that this will have potentially well, in healthcare? We all hope that it will have a large impact. Uh, I mean, personally, I lost my, my sister to cancer. I lost my mother to cancer. I soon, uh, recently lost my wife to a tumor. So I, that's why at my age, I, I keep going. Yeah, well, best of luck in your research. You're obviously having a huge impact and could save a lot of lives. Thank you so much for taking the time. Okay, you're most welcome.